so hello everyone in the previous session i think remember we discuss about uh, this chapter 3 physics used in hvac and we end with the vapor compression cycle but you see related to vapor compression cycle one more point is pending that is a there is a condensation on the evaporative coil and wanted like hold that point because uh, that point we can discuss only after learning this psychometric this psychometric properties especially the dew point temperature so let me quickly give you the idea we talk about the evaporative coil in the previous uh, session so you know just remember that when the air is coming out after touching to that uh, evaporative coil the first point you see don't get confused the air and refrigerant will not mix refrigerant is within that copper pipe only means within that evaporator and he is going to throw on that okay so in actual practice we'll find the bunch of fins that i'll show you in chapter 5 don't worry so when the when the air is through on that evaporative coil the air loses the heat to the refrigerant okay and remember in evaporator the the temperature of refrigerant is less and less or equal to the dew point temperature so what is exactly dew, dew point temperature i'll show you in this chapter 4 so whenever the temperature less than equal to dew point temperature remember the condensation will start and that's the reason you'll get the water from the ac how exactly i'll show you after completing this uh, dew point temperature okay so this dew point temperature again related to vapor compression cycle we'll discuss let me complete this so in this session we'll talk about this psychometry and this is very 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 important why this is important because you see in i think remember in the first session we talk about this air conditioning na, or the hvac so in HVC, we are, what we are doing, we are supposed to maintain the condition of air either by adding the heat or removing the heat. So what do you think? Without knowing the properties of air, can you think to condition the air? No. So that's the reason we are talking about the psychometry. So psychometry is what? Psychometry is a study of what? Air. In short, we used to call air, but you know this already we discussed. Air means what? Moist air, right? So you see, psychometry is a study and analysis of property of air and water vapor mixture except special cases in actual practice you'll find the moist air special cases means generally in desert areas or with the low humid areas you may find the dry air that is a special case but when you talk about air means by default we are considering air and water vapor mixture and the study of air and water vapor mixture is a psychometry okay and you must know the properties of air then only we can think to condition the air as per the human comfort or as per the process control or as per the application requirement etc so it's a very basic topic but very very important okay so first we'll talk about the different properties of air and why we'll talk about the properties of air so that <clears throat> using psychometric chart one can find these properties of air for what for the load calculation hmm. load calculation means again for conditioning the air because the load calculation is a we talk about heating or cooling load calculation in that we are going to learn how much cooling or heating is required as per the requirement so without this psychometric property especially when you talk about ventilation when you talk about infiltration and when we talk about the cfm we have we required the psychometric analysis so for all this this topic is very very important and very simple you can easily understand this just uh, some you need to just visualize <clears throat> So that you'll get the clear idea about the psychometry and after learning the psychometry means the properties of air we'll talk about this psychometric chart in manual and using the software so that the same we can use at the time of load calculation to find the properties of air at the time of calculation okay apart from this we'll talk about the psychometric analysis not in chapter four in uh, load calculation because uh, after learning some more uh, parameters only, we can think for the psychometric analysis. So in this chapter four, I'm going to explain the properties of air and the psychometric chart manual and software. So let me proceed. So what I explain the same theory here. So there are different types, uh, different properties of air. First, we'll start with the tribal temperature. So if you talk about the list, first is a tribal temperature. Second is a vital temperature. Then we have a dew point temperature. No need to write everything is there in this note. So first is the tribal temperature, second is the vital temperature, third is the dew point temperature. Then we have this relative humidity. Then we have humidity ratio. Then we'll talk about enthalpy of air. Okay. So let me start first with the tribal temperature. So this is very simple. You see, for example, assume that this is a thermometer at present in my video. Assume that this is not a pen. This is a thermometer actually it's a digital pen but assume that this is the thermometer and this is the mercury bulb for example so with this temperature with this thermometer if i measure this room temperature or the outside temperature under shade not under direct radiation 
because remember when you talk about driver temperature we are not considering the radiation heat so under shade if i measure the outside temperature or if i measure the inside temperature with a normal thermometer that we used to call travel temperature nothing simple or else for example if i say today uh, today the outside temperature in daytime was 35 degrees centigrade means i'm talking about travel temperature or for example in this remote for example you'll find a button room temperature when you press that you see i can find here 28 degrees centigrade the room temperature so this temperature is what travel temperature okay so the normal temperature or travel temperature both are same but remember the important point is here for calculation point of view you must remember this we'll use at the time of calculation it will measure the sensibility of air at the time when we deal with the calculation like heat gain through wall glass partition etc for the sensible heat i believe you already know what is sensible heat we have we have, we have discussed in chapter 3 na so to measure the sensible heat we required this travel temperature for example if you want to know how much sensible heat is transferring from outside to inside through wall we required outside travel temperature and inside travel temperature that we used to call delta t outside minus inside so that is a travel temperature so the important point very simple but the important point remember it is used to measure sensible heat okay that's it nothing else very simple so when you when you watch the news for weather you'll get the temperature the maximum temperature and the minimum temperature throughout the day na so they are talking about the travel temperature only okay next and we discussed in the first session the standard temperature for human comfort as per this uh, as a standard 55 this indoor environment so and the table is given for different conditions so we can consider a standard as 76 degree fahrenheit so that is again travel temperature okay so simple nothing else very simple but we'll use in the cal at the time of calculation how to use i'll show you at the time of load calculation this level just focus on this properties of air okay next we have this wet bulb temperature so you see wet bulb temperature is uh, cannot be explained directly like travel temperature because this is not the natural property of air travel temperature is a natural property of air na but wet bulb is not a direct property of air this is a property or this is a temperature will get based on the sling psychometry or with the operation of the sling psychometry so exactly you cannot understand the concept for this but anyhow i have some important points to discuss so first of all we'll discuss how to measure this wetel temperature then the purpose so that you can you'll get the idea but remember this this is this is not like a travel temperature travel temperature is a direct temperature of air but wet bulb temperature is not direct temperature of air it's a temperature taken by a thermometer which is going to or with the wet cotton on that bulb and we are supplying a air with a velocity say 3 to 5 meter per second approximately so what will happen for example assume that just you can watch this in the video assume that again this is the thermometer or assume that this is a thermometer and assume that this is a wet cotton or a wet cloth so after measuring the travel temperature this is important point after measuring the travel temperature we will do this process so assume that already i measured the travel temperature and the temperature is showing say 27 degrees centigrade in this thermometer thermometer say travel temperature then what i'll do i'll take a wet cloth or a wet cotton i'll put on i'll cover this bulb with the wet cloth okay after that either i'll rotate this thermometer or else i'll supply a air on this bulb approximately 3 to 5 meter per second velocity so after some time what will happen the condition cotton of will... the condition of the cloth uh, the cotton is what dry. dry condition it will dry na so how how it will dry evaporation of uh, moist air exactly because you see when you supply the air the evaporation process will take place on this wet bulb na and you know evaporation required heat so at the time of evaporation what will happen it will extract the heat from this thermometer bulb and when it is extracting the heat from the thermometer bulb what do you think the temperature is going to be less than 27 degree or more than 27 degree less than less so 27 degree was travel temperature now after that i start the process okay so at the time of this evaporation the heat will extract from the bulb resulting in lowering temperature so that recorded temperature is called wet bulb temperature just try to understand the process first then we'll talk about way to use this so it's a simple uh, process yes just if i am summarizing the things same mm -hmm. amount of same amount of heat is responsible for evaporation as well as sensible you can consider you see uh, in short you can consider this temperature is this evaporative temperature is a temperature after evaporation 
and again what you said this is related to evaporation or evaporative cooling yes so let me complete this again uh, we have some more points so let again i'm going to share the screen so you see first of all get the clear eye about the process you see this is called sling psychometry in that you'll find this uh, dry bulb and wet bulb so dry bulb will measure the means normal thermometer will measure the travel temperature and this thermometer with the cotton or a cloth which is going will will make it wet and after that by this handle will rotate this rotating means what will happen the movement of air so after some time the recorded temperature on the below thermometer will find travel temperature on the above thermometer will get wet temperature this is the process now the question is why this property is required okay so first of all as you said this is related to evaporative cooling at the time of uh, evaporative cooling or uh, when you're designing say air cooler this concept can be used or else you can take example of evaporative cooling you know air cooler works on evaporative cooling or else in uh, in pot oil pot we'll get the cooling based on the evaporative uh, we will get the cool water based on the evaporative cooling na? so these are a few example for evaporative cooling but why exactly we required this property so remember at the time of dealing with the load calculation we required the properties of air like uh, dew point temperature relative humidity or humidity different properties of air is required so the rule to use a psychometric chart is you must have minimum two properties of air then only one can find the other properties of air using psychometric chart without doing an experiment just sitting in office or sitting in home using psychometric chart or using psychometric chart uh, sorry using psychometric chart or using psychometric software one can find all the properties of air but the condition is you must have the two properties of air so dry bulb and wet bulb two are measurable no? so dry bulb importance you know that is for sensible heat but wet bulb is not for latent heat okay so that is for evaporation so then why wet bulb is required to find the other properties of air using psychometric chart okay getting a point online can you repeat this point again you see in order to use the psychometric chart the condition is if you know two properties of air then only one can use psychometric chart or psychometric software to find other properties of air without any experiment so travel temperature and wet temperature both are measurable no? uh, so if you know this two property simply using the psychometric chart or psychometric software one can easily find the other properties of air without wasting the time without doing an experiment just sitting in office with the chart or software that's it and when you use the data book at the time of load calculation like from ashray or from carrier for almost all the cities except few locations you'll find the information for dry bulb and wet bulb okay so that is available in the standard handbooks so we'll use at the time of load calculation so this is not the direct property of air this property is based on the experiment and why we need this property to find the other properties of air using psychometric chart or for just to understand with more detail you can you can consider the temperature at which after condensation sorry my mistake my mistake after evaporation the temperature it at which after evaporation so how much degrees in temperature according to that we can relate with the heat so that can be used for say evaporative cooling but here in air conditioning of uh, air conditioning is uh, evaporative cooling is different and air conditioning is different air cooler is not a part of uh, air conditioner because air cooler will provide only sensible sensible cooling not the latent cooling so we'll not discuss more about that evaporative side so for air conditioning point of view remember this wet bulb is used to find or to use the psychometric chart how to use that is the next story that i'll show you in chapter 7 at the time of dealing with the load calculation using from this data astray data okay mm -hmm.